Hi, and welcome to CVS Health Live, our ongoing series that delivers timely perspectives and insights on relevant healthcare issues happening right now. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Today, we are talking to three experts about the beauty industry and its relationship to a healthy self-image. These days, there is no shortage of ways to edit a photo or a video. And when this type of image alteration goes undisclosed, it can set up some pretty unrealistic expectations for ourselves and our own beauty. And this can have long-term impacts on our self-esteem and our mental health. Add in an onslaught of social media. Imagine you're a young and impressionable teenager, and you can see why promoting authenticity in these types of imageries on social media, in advertising, and even in the signage in the beauty aisle of our local CVS stores is a pretty worthwhile endeavor. Here to talk more about the influence of the beauty industry on our mental health and self-esteem and the progress being made to deliver more authentic images in this space, we have our three experts. Please meet A.C. Eggleston Bracey. She is the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Personal Care for Unilever North America. We have Dr. Pam Rutledge. She is a mental health advocate and media psychologist. And from CVS Health, we have their Vice President of Merchandising, Beauty, and Personal Care, Andrea Harrison. Welcome, everybody. Great to have you with me. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you for having Thanks. us. Wonderful. Glad Wonderful. to be here. So excited to talk about this because I think that this is, you know, an, an issue, especially, you know, mental health is growing in importance, you know, and it's becoming, you know, much more open in terms of like us talking about these issues. I want to hear more about how the beauty industry impacts our self-esteem, our self-image, particularly among young people. And so to dive into this, Dr. Rutledge, I'm hoping that you can kind of start us off by giving us a little bit of background and setting the stage. So how has social media changed how we consume and understand content? Why are teens and young people particularly vulnerable? And I'm curious as well about how the pandemic has changed the way and added to these issues of um, our self-esteem and our understanding of ourselves when we relate to things on social media. Well, th th it's great to be here. Thank you. And I'll try and answer that sort of as succinctly as possible. The first thing everyone should realize is obviously the digital landscape has changed a lot. And Technology use really impacts how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about others, and those things impact everything else in our lives. There's four reasons why this impact is greater. The first is that we now have access 24 seven and it's mobile, it lives in our back pocket. The second is that it's peer to peer, which means information comes to us from friends, which means it's much more believable. The third is that it's visual, which means that it triggers our emotions, which makes it much more memorable. And the fourth is that um, we have this uh, instant connection with everything. So we've got all of this stuff going on. It really changes the impact. Good news, it got us through COVID. It let people stay connected. Media use was definitely up. It allowed some of us to work, some of us to stay in touch with friends. Bad news is we are bombarded with visual images, which means that we are at risk for t internalizing unrealistic expectations, especially as you were saying, Jessica, everything can be edited so easily now. We can tune this, Photoshop that, and we have created this artificial impression of what beauty is. This is so important, especially for teens and young adults because they are in a period of identity formation. And so they are looking to others to find out what it means to be grown up, what it means to be beautiful, what it means to be competent, all of these things. And it's shifting the emphasis towards the superficial external beauty rather than substance internally. And Dr. Rutledge, you know, I want to clarify a misconception too, because I think a lot of times when we hear talk about beauty and self-esteem and self-image and looking at these pictures, we often think of women and girls, but it's not just women and girls, right? It's all of us. I mean, if everyone has an ideal that has been changed by media. Men and women may have different perspectives, different groups may have different perspectives about what's beautiful to them but all of it is being filtered, altered, and put forward and creating this new reality. 
All right, AC, I want to bring you into the conversation because I know Dove has done a lot of research to understand the impact of unrealistic beauty standards. Can you get into some of that for us and elaborate on some of these standards, where they originated and how they're impacting us partic and particularly young people today? Sure. First, I'll just say thank you for having me. This is such an important topic, so I appreciate CVS Health for hosting this. So fantastic. Uh, next, I want to say Dove is deeply committed to changing the beauty narrative. And from what it is today, we want one that is more diverse and more inclusive. Um, we're really setting out to shift these narrow standards that you see that make us feel so uncomfortable, that are really harmful. We know they have adverse effects on our self-esteem, our mental wellness, and they also limit our access to opportunities. And I wanna to talk to you more about that. So through that, that's why we've commissioned a lot of research to really uncover what the damaging impact of these narrow beauty standards are that permeate society throughout the media, especially social media. So there are two areas that we're focused on in our mission to change beauty for a more positive impact. The first area is actually addressing issues of systemic bias and discrimination, and particularly among black and brown communities. And often these bias and areas of discrimination are based on physical attributes. And an example of that is what happens with our hair. So we fielded something called the Dove Crown Research Study, and we did that among black and white women. And it, what it revealed was really alarming. The, for a black woman, 80% are more likely to be, 80% are more likely to change our natural hair to meet societal norms or workplace expectations. And black women are, check this out, 50% more likely to be sent home from work or know of someone being sent home from work because of her hair. So, and these are like textured hairstyles, braids, locks, bantu knots. We ask great hairstyles for job readiness. These hairstyles are at the lowest. So you can see how these physical images impact your well-being and your access. So the second area is what we've been talking about are the harmful effects of the prolific digital and social media world that Dr. Rutledge talked about that we're bombarded with. So in 2018, we know there were 95 million posts every day on Instagram alone. That is crazy. And we know these posts, as Dr. Rutledge said, are tuned up with filters, digitally distorted, and young people, they want to reach these unattainable representations of beauty. So our data shows that when it comes to social media, and this is global, 80% of girls have downloaded a filter or used an app to change the way they look by the age of 13. 63% of these girls wish the world would focus more on who they are and how they look. And I tell you, I agree. So, you know, as a black woman, a mother of a 15-year-old daughter, both of these issues are deeply personal to me. So whether it's changing the way your hair naturally grows from your head to comply with outdated, you know, norms or digital distortion from a selfie, it's time for us to change this, right? And so Dove is really committed to changing beauty for the next generation. AC, I don't think my I, my jaw dropped when you started rattling off some of those statistics, and I don't think I was able to close my mouth <laughs> at all during that. I mean, eighty percent of girls downloaded a filter before the age of eight of thirteen. Thirteen, that's insane to me. I mean, I think that was like just one of the things that you said that really stood out to me. Holy cow! All right, Andrew, I want to come to you now and bring you into the conversation here because I understand CVS Health they they've launched an initiative a couple of years ago actually called. Beauty Mark, and I want to hear what this is, and then get us up to speed on how this how this this initiative has evolved within CVS to help kind of you know uh, address some of these uh, some of these changes in the culture that um as, that AC just brought up to us. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the statistics shared today were not new to us, and back in January of 2018 we started out with our Beauty Mark commitment, which was originally intended to educate customers on the differences between images that have been digitally altered and those that were simply authentic. And we did that because we recognized it, that we could play a role in building a healthier self-image for the next generation. And we've continued to build on that since that time. It took us about a year before we were able to get about 70% of the images in our stores at, an, at unaltered, which was amazing and required support from so many of our brand partners. And then finally, in May of 2021, earlier this year, we reached our goal of full transparency across all of the beauty images used 
and produced for CVS Pharmacy. And so since that time, we actually um, have been able to enlist 600 influencer partners to share over 50 million impressions of unaltered social imagery held to our beauty mark standards across all of their channels, which has been incredible. Can you talk a little bit more about, you know, some of the impact that that this type of initiative has had on your partners and, you know, um, on, on the companies that you do work with? I think it's really important that organizations like CVS Health or like Unilever via Dove are leading the way in terms of you know using their the, the mass market reach that they have to, to put these types of authentic images in places where people will regularly see them. So can you say a little bit more about that, please? Absolutely. We worked with all of our partners to make sure that they understood our guidelines so that all of our images could either be labeled beauty marked, which means they're transparent, or labeled digitally unaltered. So we reached out to everyone in our universe, including Unilever and the Unilever team. We, I think we, AC can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think we had them at hello um, because our, our goals and our values here are so closely aligned. But we did have to work across a variety of partners across a, an industry you know, known for, for photoshopping in a lot of ways. And so I've been really thrilled with the impact we've been able to have across our partners, across the industry. Um, today, for example, CoverGirl and many of the other brands in the Cody portfolio use those unaltered CVS Beautymark compliant images across all retailers. And in 2020, we inspired Olay's commitment to zero skin retouching in their advertising materials with their Olay Skin Promise, which they debuted as a way to communicate unaltered imagery as well. So that Olay Skin Promise is aligned with Beauty Mark standards and is used across all of their marketing channels, including content created by their influencer partners, much like we do at CVS. As Andrea said, she certainly had to said hello, but I just want to applaud the work because this is what drives broad scale change. So for CVS to make this commitment, as you heard from what Andrea said, it causes lots of brands to make sure they are using the beauty mark. So well done, um, Andrea. It's, it's a privilege, privilege to work with you. Yeah, and if you don't mind, let me just tag on there. One of the things that we forget is that social comparison is a normal instinctive response to our social environment. The problem is when we get stuck and we don't have the self-awareness or the knowledge to free ourselves from unrealistic expectations. So feeling bad about social comparison isn't going to help, but educating people and what I really love about the Beauty Mark campaign and all of the partners work is that it really has a larger message. It isn't just about this picture hasn't been altered. It's about saying you don't have to be altered to be good enough to be here. And that's such a profound shift in the narrative that we tell about beauty that I think, I mean, to me, that's extraordinary. And you can see people are hungry for it. In the research that we did, um, partnering with CVS, eight out of 10 women said they felt inspired by seeing unaltered pictures, by seeing real women. And, you know, and hats off to Dove for really starting this uh, way back in the day, too. And they also said beauty treatments that give them a sense of self-control and make them feel better about themselves and others so that they're hungry for these solutions. So this whole event here is so profoundly important. AC, I want to come back to you and that hat tip that Pam gave you. You know, it, it, Dove really does have, you know, this, this history of being, you know, one of the leading, one of the leading organizations in driving this change and this, this acceptance of, you know, real beauty. So but give me an update. What's happening over there now? I mean, how are you guys moving, moving this conversation forward and continuing to perpetuate this, this positive experience for people around what genuine and authentic, authentic beauty looks like? Yeah, thank you for that. It's interesting. I joined Unilever back in 2018, and one of the reasons I joined is because of the incredible work that Dove has always done to make a positive impact. And championing for beauty inclusivity, I'd like to say, is truly Dove's life's work. And as you mentioned, Dove pioneered something called the Campaign for Real Beauty. That was in 2004. And it was to help create a more positive experience of beauty in ourselves. But why, as we were talking about the data, was recognizing that at the time, globally, another stat, only 2% of women worldwide considered themselves, ourselves beautiful. 2%. <laughs> so 
So that is astonishing. So when you ask what we're doing now, it's all out of our continued commitment to celebrate the diversity of our beauty and address issues that impede our confidence and well-being. So there are three different ways that we're doing this, that we're focused. One is raising self-esteem and boosting body confidence in young people by working with psychologists, educators, experts to develop academically validated self-esteem education tools. You could say, why does that matter? I didn't know, and many don't know, but did you know that Dove is the largest self-esteem education provider in the world, period, ahead of any NGO? So we've reached more than 69 million young people across 150 countries. So this is academically validated self-esteem tools that help young people and that aid the parents and guardians and mentors. So then the second area is what we've been talking about, only showing people as they are in real life. That's 100% unfiltered and unedited. So we've been doing this a long time. An example is 15 years ago, Many of you might remember we launched something that was called the Evolution Film. It was kind of iconic. That was showing all the heavy editing uh, that images went through before landing in a page of a magazine or a billboard. <laughs> so now with social media, this summer we released a film that we call Reverse Selfie, where we're tackling the dis digital distortion we've been talking about on social media and illuminating the damage that distortion can have on young kids. What we find is parents don't talk about this with their kids. 82% have had the sex talk, but only 30% have talked to the kids about the pressures of social media. And that is really pressing for so many of our young people. So this selfie talk makes it easier for parents um, and the tools to have this talk. Actually, we call the talk a selfie talk. Um, so that's an area. And then the third area I mentioned before is continuing to work to make race-based hair discrimination illegal nationwide. That's in all 50 states by championing what you might know as the Crown Act legislation. Crown stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. Today, I'm proud to say we've championed and have it passed in 14 states or legislation that's inspired by it but there's 36 more states that haven't passed it. So our work is getting this legislate, leg, legislation nationwide. So we'll, we'll continue to be active and working to change beauty for its positive effect on the next generation. I have so many follow-up questions. So before I get into some tips for parents and caregivers to talk about their kids and, and bring up the conversation about self-esteem, because I think that's a very important point that only 30% have had the self-esteem conversation, whereas so many more have had the sex conversation, both incredibly important. And really, they kind of go hand in hand, right? But before I get there, I do want to I want to ask you, Pam, you know, when you hear some of these initiatives that that are you know being put in place by companies like CVS Health or by Unilever via Dove, you know, can they really make a, a difference? I mean, how, you know, from your perspective, as somebody who's a mental health advocate, who's a physician, when you hear about the fact that these, these large corporations are, are dedicating so much emphasis to providing this type of education, especially related to mental health, you know, what, what's your response to that? Do you think that this is something that's really going to be game changing? It's game changing because it changes what people talk about. I mean, we've seen that a lot over the last few years that these conversations now are becoming much more common. I mean, that's really been the case with mental health, with the events that have happened with some of the athletes coming forward and talking about that so transparently. Getting people to talk makes them aware. Awareness is the only way that you can really stop the damage of that kind of social comparison, is that people have to realize what's going on in order to make change. They have to be able to reframe what they're telling themselves, that nasty little inner voice that we all have. They have to be able to catch that and redirect it. So for brands and organizations to do put well-being first is really beneficial, for, obviously, to the corporations because it builds trust, but it's also the right thing to do, and it creates a much different commercial environment where people can actually trust in the products they buy and the companies that are putting them forward. You know, we know that self-image is at the core of well-being. And so, AC, I loved what you said about preparing this for the next generation. I just had a new granddaughter. I want her to grow up feeling like she's enough from the inside out, not that everything is valued from the outside in. So, you know, it's 
it's I, I can't un underestimate how important or overestimate how important this all is. All right, let's let's dive into that a little bit, Pam, because I want to I want to talk about you know how we can start these conversations at home. So how we can kind of follow the lead of the things that we're seeing, you know, in the stores, on TV, on social media that are driving more authenticity and into you know what we're seeing as far as what beauty is. So Pam, start us off, and then AC and Andrea, I want to come to you for your tips as well. But you know, Pam, how do you start this conversation with with your kids? Well, this is my favorite soapbox. Haul it out. It's really about media literate. <laughs> It's really about media literacy, right? It's about having conversations that are non-judgmental, where you're listening so that you can build a bridge of trust. You really need to have trust with your kids because you don't love what they love, and that they have to appreciate that you understand them, understand their position and their pressures so that you can give them your wisdom. So have that conversation. Understand that these negative emotions undermine all of the things in our lives, resilience, optimism, energy, productivity, and that's true for organizations too. It's not like we forget about all of these pressures when we go to work every day. And that we start to listen to that internal dialogue. So I encourage parents to, and why well, everyone actually, but to have their kids keep a log, a simple log, don't make it hard. Write down what you're doing with social media Look for patterns. Think about how you feel when you're using it. When are you using it? Why are you using it? And then listen to what you tell yourself when you're making these choices. Do I use a filter? Why do I use a filter? What is going on in my head when I make that choice? So that you can catch that voice and then reframe it. And if you can't think of something nice to say about yourself, take an affirmation and say out loud, I am empowered. I am beautiful. I am unfiltered. I'm enough, right? You're going to feel silly that first day in front of the mirror, but I'll tell you after a, a month of saying that to yourself every day, you will feel differently. And then remember, nothing happens overnight. Have compassion for yourself. Change takes time. All right, Andrea, I want to come to you with kind of the same question. Can you give us you know, some tips, you know, for, for, for any individual who might be like, oh my God, you're talking right to me. I should probably be, be embracing some of this stuff to build my own self-confidence, my own self-esteem as far as my self-image. And also for parents, your best tip there. And also if you could tell us where people can go to find out more information within the, the world of CVS Health, you know, if there's, if there's stuff there that could be useful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm also a mom. I have three kids. I have two girls and a son. Um, and my my daughters are approaching that sort of preteen age. So this conversation has been really relevant even in my own house. And I've actually used the work we're doing at CVS to start to teach them early the differences between altered and unaltered and the difference, you know, the differences between what they're seeing online. So I actually have taken my girls into the store and pointed out all of the beauty marks some days. And they're young and it seems silly, but they're it's part of the conversation. They've talked about it at school. They've come home and shared that. And so, um, you know, I think to Dr. Rutledge's point earlier, the actions a lot of us are taking, even in small steps, can help create those conversations in all sorts of different ways. And so really proud of the way we've been able to, to start those conversations for some. And I, like I said, I've done it myself. And then I think, you know, over time, um, we'll start to see more and more of this, right? We'll start to see more data points around the impact of all of us staring at ourselves like this every day, in addition to social media and the impact that's having. And, you know, we intend to continue to keep these conversations going so that the conversation and the message is at the forefront and we're all conscious and teaching each other and reminding ourselves um, the impact and, and to think differently about, about what we're doing. So from a CVS standpoint, you can find out more about the Beauty Mark Initiative on our page, which I believe we'll link at the end. Um, and, and from us in the coming weeks, months, years, you'll continue to see a focus on this. We believe this is really important, especially in the beauty industry that has so much power over young people today, and we'll continue to do our part to influence and try to create as much change as we can to get others on this commitment as well. Awesome. AC, what about you? I mean, give us some, some of your best tips, life hacks here for making sure that people are, you know, doing what they can to build up their own self-esteem or help, you know, grow the self-esteem of their children. I and mean, also talk to where people can find more information um, about the initiatives that you're working on. Yeah, I, I think like Dr. Rutledge said, it's great that mental wellness is becoming less tabooed. And so we are having the conversations, young people are. When I look at my daughter and her friends, they talk about how they feel. So I think lean into that to have the conversation. 
one of the things that we're doing on Dove, you can go to dove.com backslash self-esteem and download some of the tools to help start the conversation because a lot of parents say they just don't know where to start. They're afraid their kids are gonna roll their eyes, but the tools will help you find the way in and then stick with it. The other thing is um, it's more than parents that influence our kids. It's their other influencers. So really look at who is influencing your kids. It could be a teacher. It could be a friend of a parent. It could be their friends. You know, it could be an old babysitter. So really reaching out to that community of, of connections and also having the conversation. And again, these tools will help you. So um, the other thing I love that Dr. Rutledge talked about is the self-talk. That's what I personally do. If I find myself feeling unconfident or insecure, I actually, to this day, will give myself an affirmation to say, you got this. What are you worried about? What's the worst that can happen? And I find if it persists, repetition. So it's not just the one time, it's over and over again. I was once told that it takes three weeks to form that. So, you know, I will say there's a lot of personal things you can do. And then Dove will continue to work in this area. Our mantra is let's, let's change beauty. And we believe that we can do it together. So through the tools for parents and for young people themselves with our, our self-esteem workshops that we're gonna continue. We're also starting to work with influencers much more because we know parents can't do it on its own. So social media influencers to make this the normal. And then, you know, I talked about the Crown Act, which is so important because imagine a young person turned away from school on her first day because she has braids or locks. Talk about the impact on your self-esteem. So making that the law everywhere and continuing to foster education around all hair is beautiful hair. We'll continue to do that. And then we're going to work with CVS and Beauty Mark because we love the work that they're doing to extend that further. So, um, those are a few thoughts, so thank you. Sure, lots of exciting things on the horizon. Pam, I was gonna come to you. I want you to wrap this up for us. <laughs> oh, well, no, I just wanted to say to Andrea how wonderful it is that she's modeling the kind of behavior she wants to see. And you too, AC, where you're, you're not just lecturing kids about they shouldn't feel bad or they shouldn't be on social media. You're saying, you know, here's, a, here's the beauty mark. What does it mean? What is it telling you? You're talking about that bigger picture so that they can start to see the world with a different lens. And so I think that's really what we're doing. We're trying to change the way we think about beauty, not just change a picture, but change the way we approach all of this so that we have appreciation for our strengths and values. Because the one thing that external validation does not do is that it doesn't appreciate who we are as humans. It doesn't appreciate who we are, our personal strengths. Those are the things that drive self-esteem. It isn't how great our hair looks, right? It's how we feel about ourselves on the inside. So this could not be more timely and more important. Thank you so much. Ladies, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for sharing all of the work that you're doing in this space, these initiatives that have been ongoing and continue to ramp up. I love the fact that these this movement is gaining momentum. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing your perspectives with us and getting us all kind of up to speed on why this is important, what we can do, and what's next. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. All right, my pleasure. All right, thank you so much to our panelists. All right, AC Eggleston Bracey from Unilever, Dr. Pamela Rutledge, a mental health advocate and media psychologist, and Andrea Harrison from CVS Health. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. For more information, you can check out the links below on the screen um, to make sure you know what those are. They are CVS Health's Beauty Mark website and also Dove's site, which is dove.com slash self-esteem. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of CVS Health Live. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.